Good afternoon, everyone. I'm very happy to speak to you today. I'm Takashi Menjo from Japan. My presentation today is about introducing PMDK into PostgreSQL. First, let me introduce myself. I have worked on system software, such as distributed block storage or operating system. This is my first time to dive into PostgreSQL. I tried to refine open source software by a new storage and a new library, and I choose PostgreSQL. Today, I will show our first idea, and we won't have better idea, so any discussions and comments are very welcome. Okay, let's start. This is overview of my talk. Uh, let me begin with introduction. Uh, persistent memory and PMEM is an emerging memory-like storage device. It's non-volatile, byte addressable, and as fast as DRAM. Several types of PMEM are already released or announced. We use NVDIN N types of PMEM in this presentation. The, this, chart shows, uh, this chart is telling how PMEM is fast. Uh, this shows read and write latency of each device, so lower is better. The rest most is DRAM, and the middle three are PMEM. Solid state drive or uh, spindle drive are far from DRAM and PMEM. Zoom into the left four. Here. Uh, each type of PMEM is close to DRAM, so uh, it's fast enough for storage use. And Famous databases are on the way to PMEM. Uh, Microsoft SQL Server, SAP HANA, and MariaDB are getting to PMEM. And of course, PostgreSQL is. An early work is reported in PGCon two years ago. So it's time for us to get into PMEM. What do we need to use PMEM? We need hardware support and software support, uh, such as those this, uh, written here. Today, I will focus on performance improvement and talk about DAX and PMDK. Both of the two are already supported in Linux and Windows. I will explain DAX, PMDK, and then what we did. Uh, traditional I.O. stack is, as shown described in the left, uh, PostgreSQL uses file I.O. APIs, such as read or write system calls in POSIX. Then, go to the middle. Uh, PostgreSQL can run on DAX-enabled file system because uh, the provided API is the same as before. It can run uh, also much. Uh, it can run. Uh, it can run faster than before because DAX uh, reads and writes the uh, file data on PMM directly. It bypasses page cache, so there is no page cache, uh, to reduce redundant uh, memory copy. And then, go to the right. DAX-enabled file system also provides memory mapped file. Uh, it maps the file on PMM directly into user space. So the application can use CPU instructions to access the file data. 
uh, without context switch. So it can run much faster. In this way, PMDK provides uh, primitive memory functions uh, such as uh, CPU cache flash or memory barrier. Uh, so that uh, it, makes, uh, it makes sure that the uh, date uh, persists on PMM. And finally, what we did is here. Uh, we hack PostgreSQL to use memory mapped file and PMDK library. Then we compare the performance of the middle and the right to evaluate uh, what we did. So uh, memory map file and PMDK can improve the performance of I.O. intensive workload because it reduces context switches and the overhead of API calls. To make it sure, uh, we run micro benchmark that performs 8 kibibyte synchronous write. It emulates uh, the xlog I.O. inside the PostgreSQL. And the result shows that uh, DAX and PMDK is twice and a half as fast as DAX only. We think uh, it's good to apply PMDK, so we try to introduce it into PostgreSQL. Next, uh, I'll talk about our hacks and evaluation. Uh, before going into details, I wish uh, I show our approach here. The important point is uh, there are impo two important points: uh, how to hack and what we hack. First, how to hack. Uh, we get two ideas: replace da, 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 and have da, 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 and choose the first uh, idea. Uh, I think it's easier way, so it's reasonable for our first step. Second, what we hack. Uh, we look into PostgreSQL to find out what type of files are used in it. We choose xlog and relation segment files because it's critical for perform uh, transaction performance or many writes occur during checkpoint. Uh, roughly speaking, we replace five system calls, including uh, read and write, by using PMDK. Uh, the blue four functions here, 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 and here uh, are provided by libpmm. Uh, it's the base library of PMDK. Note that uh, memory mapping functions and uh, unmapping functions uh, takes the length of the mapped, uh, mapped file. So uh, please take care of that uh, memory mapped file cannot extend or shrink during being mapped. Okay, go to the X road. Uh, an xlog segment file uh, contains right ahead log records. It's critical for transaction performance. Uh, I believe that uh, you all here are uh, PostgreSQL expert, so uh, I skip the details. <laughs> and how we have xlog? Uh, we have a PostgreSQL memory map every segment file and memory copy to it from the xlog buffer. Note that uh, fixed length uh, xlog segment file is highly compatible with memory mapping because it don't need to either uh, extend or shrink. Uh, my colleague Yoshimi uh, made a patch set. 
it has approximately 1,000 line changes, and it's available on PGSQL Hacker mailing list. So please search PMDK. And this is a variation setup. I use one x64 computer with two NUMA nodes. I dedicate node zero to PostgreSQL server and node one to client, such as pgbench or psql command. And PostgreSQL.conf is like this. And to evaluate xlog hacks, I, I compare transaction throughput by using pgbench on the five conditions below. The pgbench parameters are here. Uh, scale factor is 200 and runtime is 30 minutes. Uh, 30 minutes. And the condition E corresponds to our hacks. And the condition C, D, and E uses PMM uh, for xlog. But each of them uh, use different word sync method. So we should compare these three to evaluate our hacks. And a and B uh, for your information. Uh, these two uses obtain SSD for xlog instead of PMEM. This is the result. Each bar shows throughput in kilo TPS. So higher is better. The condition E achieved the best result, 38.1. And comparing C and E, uh, the, uh, the throughput is improved by 3%. This is because of our hacks. So we, uh, we can improve throughput by 3%. This is roughly the same as Yosemi reported on PG Seeker Hackers. It seems small in the percentage, but I think not so small in the absolute value. For future work, uh, we, do perform we will do performance profiling to find hotspot. We also search for a query pattern for which our hack is more effective. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, in the abstract of our talk, uh, we said we achieved up to 1.8 math throughput uh, uh, in uh, using insert uh, intensive benchmark. Uh, but this uh, yeah, this is our own benchmark, but the, uh, this uh, is uh, quite artificial, so not real life. However, I think uh, I think uh, our hack is effective for such workloads, uh, IO intensive workload. So uh, we continue to search uh, our. Uh, more real, uh, more real um, uh, query pattern. <laughs> okay, that's all of xlog. And next, go to relation. Uh, relation segment file is so-called data file. I think. It's critical for checkpoint duration. I skipped details again because you're an expert. <laughs> and how we hack relation? Uh, we 
have PostgreSQL memory map only every one gigabyte segment file and memory copy to it from the shared buffer. The reason only one gigabyte segment is that it's difficult for me to uh, handle extending and shrink uh, relation in proper PostgreSQL manner. Uh, relation file can extend or shrink up to one gigabyte, but memory mapped file cannot do so while being mapped. Uh, remapping the file on every extend uh, or shrink uh, can be a solution, but it seems difficult to implement. So I decided only one gigabyte. Uh, memory map only one gigabyte segment file uh, because uh, it cannot extend uh, anymore over one gigabyte and I ignore uh, the shrink. So my work is still in progress. I made a patch set uh, that have uh, 150 line changes uh, and my patch set is not published yet uh, because it is still under test. Uh, evaluation setup, setup is uh, same as before except here. I set checkpoint timeout to one day. It's enough wrong. Uh, it's wrong enough not to kick checkpoint automatically. I also check, uh, set checkpoint completion target to zero uh, to uh, complete every checkpoint as soon as possible. To evaluate our relation hacks, I compare checkpoint duration time as here. It's a little uh, tricky, but the important point is that uh, the server uh, flush out uh, on every condition, uh, the server flush out the same amount of uh, page uh, during checkpoint. And I set the amount as seven and three, uh, 37 gigabytes. Then I initialize the database, uh, restart the server, and make the shared buffer ready by pgbench. Then I send checkpoint query to the server uh, to kick first immediate checkpoint. After checkpoint down, I check uh, the administration log for, uh, to make sure that the uh, flush, flush out pages, uh, the amount of flushed out pages is 7.37 gigabytes. And uh, with, uh, we get total a checkpoint duration time from the log file. Uh, I compare three on three conditions here. The condition C is corresponds. Uh, the condition C corresponds to our hacks. And condition A is for your information. Uh, it uses obtain SSD for PGDATE instead of PMEM. Moreover, uh, condition B and C, uh, we provide uh, this, uh, this by Linux path command. <coughs> this is the result. Each bus shows checkpoint duration time, so Lower is better. Comparing B and C, we achieved 
30 percent uh, improvement of checkpoint duration time. Then, uh, profile of B and C. This shows relative CPU cycles regarding the total CPU cycles of B as 100. C indicates 71. Uh, that matches uh, the improvement by 30 percent. First, uh, look at the sky blue portion. This uh, stands for syslite, uh, right system core. Note that uh, data copy in the right system core is separated as deep blue portion. So sky blue portion only contains the overhead. The overhead falls 20 percentage points. This is the main reason of uh, the improvement. Next, green portion. Uh, this was seven percentage point. And this stands for entry C score 64 or its family. And that is a context switch between a user space and kernel space. So uh, look at deep blue portion and brown portion. Uh, both of the two uh, stand, uh, th both of the two stand for uh, memory copy, but blue one is uh, kernel space, and brown one is user space. And the user space memory copy function is provided by PMDK. Uh, the summation of the two uh, falls three percentage point. Finally, orange portion, uh, lock buff head. Uh, this became rather longer than before, but I don't know why. So the discussion, uh, we shorten checkpoint duration by 30%. I know that the regular checkpoint uh, do not uh, perform at a full speed. Uh, it, uh, level, it will be uh, leveled uh, during checkpoint uh, target. But I think the server can give its computing resources to the other purposes. So it can serve more transactions during the checkpoint. And I reduce the overhead of system calls and uh, context switches. It's the benefit of using memory mapped files. However, there is still open issue. The time of lockback header became rather longer. So I try to find the reason of this for future work. So this is conclusion of evaluation. We improve transaction throughput and shorten checkpoint duration. I think it's not so bad result in an easier way, but we must bring out more potential from PMM because it is far from 2.5 uh, uh, times in micro benchmark. I should think another way uh, that is to have data structures on D1 persist on PMM directory. So I will continue to my work to realize this. Okay. Next, I show some tips related to PMM. Hmm. First, uh, CPU cache flash and cache bypassing store. These are the important uh, because the data should reach nothing but PMM. That is, don't stop at half volatile middle layer such as 
CPU cache. Or it will be lost when the program or system crashes. For that purpose, x64 offers two instruction families, clflash and movent. clflash flashes data out of CPU caches to memory. Movent stores data to memory, bypassing CPU cache. BMDK supports both of the two by these functions. So you don't need to write uh, assembly code for use these instructions. And uh, OK, skip this. Mm. And so uh, okay, this uh, I talk about page table and huge page. Uh, in regular x64 uh, architecture, uh, the page size uh, of the uh, CPU uh, is four kibibyte, but it's so small uh, for PMEM uh, that uh, the many uh, page fault occurs uh, during uh, storing large data. So uh, it's um, critical uh, for uh, performance. And huge page will improve performance of PMEM by reducing page work and TLB miss. Uh, good news is that PMDK on X64 considers huge page by aligning the mapping address on huge page boundary when the file is large enough. And pre-moving page table for PMM will also make the performance better. Anyway, we take care about page table and huge page. And, and controlling NUMA effect is critical for stable performance on multiprocessing system. Uh, the operating system schedules which process runs on which core. So uh, your process can run on uh, can run on mm, node zero, uh, either node zero or node one. And if you control, if you don't control explicitly. So uh, to control this, you can use numa control command to bind processes to a certain node or certain core. Here, uh, x, uh, you assign zero to x here. Uh, your process uh, run on node zero only and never run on node one. So th this is the last tip. I think we should have a new common sense of hotspot. Uh, PMM, uh, PMM is so much faster than the traditional disk storage. So something other than storage access could be hotspot of transaction. When we use traditional disk, uh, disk access uh, could be the, uh, it's fire, fire. <laughs> uh, could be the uh, hotspot of the transaction. But when we use PMM, the access time decreases and other portions uh, become hotspot such as uh, described here. Locking, memory copy, pre-processing. And actually, we fell into 
this sequel pass trap, when we evaluate um, X log hux by PG bench, and we avoided it by prepared statement. Okay. Finally, conclusions. We applied PMDK into PostgreSQL in an easier way, and we achieved not so bad result. And I showed some tips related to PMEM. I believe that PMEM will change software design drastically, and we should change software and our mind to bring out PMEM's potential much more. I will continue my work, and uh, I'm glad to. Uh, I, I'm happy uh, that I'm happy if uh, you are interested in PM, PMM and PMDK. So please try PMM and PM, PMDK. <laughs> okay, that's all. Any questions? <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>